because of that. Are we done? Oh, we're on. Hi, welcome to my review of the Pilot Custom Heritage 823. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about the peak. <laughs> that's where we are right now. Uh, this is on Hong Kong Island. Um, it, this is directly above where the first trading trading offices ports used to be um, back when the British first took over Hong Kong. They got Hong Kong Island first and then a bit of Kowloon which you see in this triangular peninsula behind buildings. The peak is where most of uh, the ruling class, not quite ruling class, but most of all, all the uh, British people lived, all the expats, all the officers, uh, because they, they're they not going to live down in the riffraff near, near the port where, where, where you have all the peasants and, and, and coolies. There's a cable car service that's been around for over a hundred years at this point. It's just one track, it goes up and down, up and down, takes around 10 minutes or so. In the past, there, there were a number of stops bits up the hill for, for where different people lived and they're like first, second and third class sections. Well, it, it's been quite a while since then and, and, and now this is modern Hong Kong. Directly below us we have Central Business District. That's where all most of the tall buildings are. And on the sides of it is, is, is usually where you see um, where all the rest of the riffraff lived back when there was just one road. And the sides are Wan Chai, Kozhe Bay, Shangwan. That's where all the regular Chinese people lived. Other interesting things, if you go back and look at old photos of Hong Kong, what we call Kowloon now is, is, is uh, just across the harbour, used to be rice fields. Uh, they used to just be a ferry service, eventually became a, a larger ferry service for, for cars as well. And, and now we still have the ferry service, but we also have like three cross harbour tunnels. And traditionally, the Star Ferry Service has always been operated by a bunch of these Chinese sailor dudes. And there's still old Chinese dudes just on the sides of the ferry throwing the, the, the ropes and doing all the anchoring stuff. Anyway, right, yes, all right. We were here to talk about the Pilot Custom Heritage 823. There are three sizes of Pilot Gold Nibs. Uh, <clears throat> 5, 10, 15, 5 is like the ones on the custom 74s and stuff, uh, 10 is on the 912 and the 92 demo piston fill ones, and 823, 845, 743, they all have size 15, it, 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 it's the, whoa, those are some fast dogs, Fly custom 823, size 15 nib, comes in brown, Smoky brown, brown, and there's smoky, and there's also a transparent one. Uh, usually it's silver. Some stores in Japan have their own store exclusives that are like silver furnishing instead of gold. Out of all the size 15 nibs, the 743 has the most nib options. This one only comes in fine, medium, and broad. Again, there are certain store exclusives that carry other specialty nibs without you having to buy two pens and like swap nibs or anything. The only direct competitor it has is the VAC, the Twisby VAC 700, which should be somewhere around here. I just forgot where I put it. Hmm. Then I forgot to bring it again. Oh dear. Oh wait, I have a vac. Oh wait, but it's not the vac you're looking for. This, complete unrelated, is a Parker Vacuumatic. Totally different system. Not related. Oh wait, I found it. Size-wise, they are very similar. Same length. If you uncap them, you can see the pilot is a little bit more graceful about these where the threads are, it's less of a jump, it's sleeker. Uh, nib? Nib sizes are very similar. Filling system is the same. So, th 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 there's the 700 and the 823. 
How does it write? Uh, gold nib, slightly soft. It's, 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 it's not a soft nib, but because of the fact that it's gold, it, it, it does write slightly soft. Uh, very smooth right out of the box. I actually did buy this as a replacement for my uh, VAC 700 as my go-to sketching nib for two reasons. One is massive capacity, so I, I don't have to like worry about it not having any ink when I'm like on holiday sketching. Because it's a VAC fill, it's really easy to clean. I get I, I can put uh, the Sailor Nano Black in inside and that stuff has a, is a little bit hard to get off unless it's a vac field because you just pull up the pull pull the plunger up and down a few times and, and that totally sweeps aside free of any any, any um, pigment residue that might be inside so that's that I would consider the the it's very it's a very, it's a very pilot-esque nib sensation. Um, it's smooth. It, 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 it's, it's really smooth, uh, and there's a very slight, slight give of the tines on, um, when you first touch the, the pen to paper. Is this safe? What if I drop the pen? I must remember. I can drop the pad, I can't drop the pen. And yeah, so a really nice nib. It, it's not an excessively large body. Pilot Custom Heritage 823. I have considered the next time I'm back in Japan, I'll, I'll probably see if I can get a 743 with the, with, the, with, with the FA Super Flexi nib and, and like swap it. What else is there? Uh, smooth, there's a soft, soft first touch. And, and of course with all facts, it's really easy to clean. Not that you do it very often. If you haven't noticed, mostly because you can't choose, well, like you, you haven't checked the settings, you're shooting in 4K. But only if you have a 4K monitor. Otherwise, me and my 1080p only, there's no point switching to 4K. Uh, yeah, we're right in front of the harbor. If we did a one minute challenge, it wouldn't be doing the scene any justice. So you have to bear with me for for a few minutes. I'm not one minute challenging this. This is like, I suppose like... One hour challenge. <laughs> one hour challenge. <laughs> if I had to simplify... This is like... The... Smaller version of the IFC. And then there's the IFC, which from this angle is impressively tall. Even though... We are a couple of hundred meters above sea level. If you see down there, there well, the corner of my sketch, the Jardine. House. It's the one down there with its windows look like they are circular. Jardine House, uh, obviously named after one of the big businessmen who first settled, uh, settled, more like abused Hong Kong for his business deals. We have had quite a few historical business tycoons, most of whom were, were oddly enough like, like Scottish. Which Scottish men were part of Hong Kong's trading history as a gateway between the West and, and like China? And you like you have like Jody Matheson, that, that, that's their building. There are a few more whose name escapes me right now. If you're interested in this stuff, 
There's this author out there called Jan Morris and she has a book she has a lot of books on colonial like she has a trilogy on the colonial history of Great Britain and she has a book called Hong Kong Epilogue to an Empire which uh, was published around the 90s and talks about the the complete history of Hong Kong from um, it's beginning like the, the, the 1800s. So if you're interested, you can, you can go look her up. She's one of my favorite uh, non-fiction authors. Down there you have, on Callum's side, is, is uh, our terminal. And, and in a faint distance, there is a There is a star something, star Pisces, I think, usually. That size. It's not our biggest port, but, but it's the most convenient one near the center of the city. Uh, just got some buildings. It's a very touristy place, the harbor. And then there's like two star ferry terminals. In fact, the, the, the star ferries have such history that um, Midori had once put out a, lim a, a star ferry limited edition of their Traveler's Notebooks. I'm not sure if they're still available these days. And you've got like a, a very slightly rotund star ferry ship ships. You have our cultural center, where the Hong Kong Philharmonic resides. Uh, and then you have a whole bunch of buildings which I really don't care about. Let's just fill it in randomly. The harbor continues across to the west, which is mostly wasteland. Okay, it's not wasteland, it's just undeveloped stuff that was reclaimed. And people are arguing over what to do with it. Uh, the government is trying to turn it into like, some sort of cultural district but no one can decide on like how they should design the cultural district. And bits near it are like owned by our, our MTR corporation, which is known as um, one of the world's like, like most profitable companies. They have a deal with the government where, 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 where they get some of the land above their stations. So not only do they get to make the stations, they also get to develop the property above the stations. And property in Hong Kong is filthy expensive. So it's just, I, it, at, at this point, people are like, oh, we want more property. And the government's like, okay. Except they give it to MTR and like the, um, the, the corporation just charges. They're like, oh, we don't want to make it, but if you want us, we'll, we'll, we'll build more expensive private property. Not visible from here in the far distance. There's a very straight line, and that's because that's where our uh, airport, our old airport used to be closed down in 1997. It might become our second ferry terminal thing. You see a cruise ship over there as well. And that's why a lot of the buildings are short because there were rules that your buildings could be too tall otherwise it would build like block, impede the entrance and exit of um, of, of planes coming in, in out of Hong Kong. Now now the airport has been shoved over to like an outlying island where, where no one's going to bother it. There are a few ships sitting out in the harbour. There's a few barges dredging the harbor. If we're still around 20 years, you'd be like, we're, we're, we're gonna re replay this footage and show you the new view. And, and there's probably gonna be like no harbor left because we're just reclaiming from both sides. Which technically is a bad thing because apparently it increases the size of the waves in, 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 in the harbor. But um, and the distance you've got, you've got, the reason as to why we call this Kowloon because it stands for uh, the nine ridges of, of like nine dragons that's what it means that's pretty much it thank you for watching boring pictures of me drawing while I yap on about Hong Kong history HK Harbour this is a lie the actual name is Victoria Harbour from the peak yes so anyway Pilot Custom Heritage H23, H23, H20, um, H823, very nice pen, a, a lot of people like it. Uh, its price is actually around 
200 USD or thereabouts, which is twice the price, around twice the price of the VAC. But I personally think it's worth the upgrade, uh, especially with the nib, unless you want stub nibs on a VAC, at which point, yeah, totally go. I, I would, I'm actually thinking of also getting a 1.1-1.5 mm nib for my VAC 700, just to keep it in, in rotation, otherwise I'll get bored because this fine nib is better than that extra fine nib I, I, I reviewed so the, the, those few years ago. There you go. Pilot Custom Heritage 823, size 15, F nib, Sailor Nano Black.